Hi folks, I'm Steve Butler. When I first moved away from home, I was full of big ideas, but I had no money and no furniture. So I scrounged up some parts and I made my own kitchen table. It's in that spirit that we're going to create a cafe style table. Come see how we do it here in the garage. All right, let's have a look at our project. Now this table I made a long time ago. It's worn and weathered. It's been sitting out on our deck acting as a patio table. The top originally came from a bulkhead door that I replaced. I just used it. I just thought that the, the green paint and the, that's weathered and the old patina was just perfect for what I needed at the time. So we're going to make a table based on that spirit. I have some shelves that were taken out of a bookcase. My local library called me up and said, hey, we have a bookcase if you want it. And uh, they know what I do, so absolutely. Why, why spend money when you don't need to? So we're going to use the shelves for the top. I have some old uh, 1x4 pine we're going to use for our supports and our legs. And the 4x4 post, I took off an old pallet. Now you have to watch when you use an old pallet. You've got to make sure you take all the nails out but that's going to be the base of our table. All right, the first thing we're going to do is glue up our top. We're going to put that aside, and then we're going to work on our feet and our supports. All right, the first thing we're going to do is the boards that I took from the bookshelf, I'm going to use for the top. I'm going to glue them up. Now, what I did, these have been all finished. They were the shelves. They actually have um, an edge attached to them. This is an oak edge. I think the boards are willow. I'm not sure, but I went to the table saw, and I just ripped down about an eighth of an inch off of each board to create an open seam so I can glue them up essentially. So now we're just going to glue this up, put it aside, work on our table base, and by the time we're finished that, we'll be able to get to our tabletop. All right, that looks great. While that's drying, we're going to go ahead and work on our table base, cut out the supports for the top, and our feet for the bottom. How did the project come about? Well, when I first moved away from home, like I said in the opening, I really didn't give it a whole lot of thought. I didn't have much money, and I really had no furniture. Um, I was always into tinkering. I wasn't into woodworking then. I hadn't started that. Um, so I built, a, went to the lumber yard, and I built a bookcase and it was just butted up and screwed and nailed together. It was pretty precarious when I put books on it. Kind of wobbled a little bit. Um, didn't last very long. And I had this book. It was a, a woodworking project book and it was filled with all these, these ideas and I saw this cafe table and chairs and I thought, that's it, I really like that. I had a small kitchen, but I wanted it to look nice. You know, first time away from home and uh, so I just I had this book and I had it for a long time and then finally I scrounged up some parts. I really didn't have much money and I didn't know what I was buying. But I had some pieces and I thought I'll give that a try. So I made a, a version of this, a similar version of this, but it wasn't quite as refined. But I used, uh, we did this in the same spirit, I used a lot of salvaged parts and put it together. Alright, the joinery used for this table is a simple rabbit joint at the top and bottom of our post. Our post is a 4x4. Four four. This happens to be a pressure treated 4x4. Four four. So you want to wear a dust mask when you're cutting into this. And you also want to double check with your offcuts or your posts that you're using that you don't get any nails or gravel or anything embedded in that that can really damage your saw blades. So we're using 1x4 dimension pine for the supports for the top and for the feet at the bottom. The top ones I'm ripping to 3 inches. 
The bottom ones I'm leaving at a true three and a half inch. So we're going to cut our rabbit three eighths deep by the width of our boards. In this case, three and a half inches for the bottom. And you can see how that'll fit in. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rip the top boards we're using to three inches. And then we're going to replace this blade with our dado set. And we're going to go ahead and cut a rabbit joint all around our post. All right. The top supports that hold the table are th three inches wide. You know, you can take a measure with your tape measure. I'm just going to take a hard read from the sample I cut and adjust the saw over to it. Make sure my blade's about a quarter of an inch above our workpiece. That aside. And all right, I'm just going to rip these down. All right, perfect. Now we're just going to go ahead and cross cut them to length. So it's a great project, I think. Um, we have our, our rabbit joint, which locks in our legs so that if there's any racking on the supports and all that, it butts up against the rabbit joint. We learned how to make a circle jig, and uh, we, we cut the circle out using our router. You could use a bandsaw. You can make a circle jig for the bandsaw. Um, or use a, a handheld skill saw, but it just it incorporates a, a, a lot of techniques. All right, our top supports are 11 inches long. The bottom ones are 13 inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna trim a clean square end and then turn them around and cut them to length. All right, we have our top supports cut to length. We have our bottom feet cut to length. Now what we're gonna do is cut the rabbit in our, the top and bottom of our post. All right, I switched out our blades and I put in a set of stacked dado blades and we're gonna use those to cut our rabbit around the top and bottom post. You could use a rabbiting bit on the router table, the bandsaw, whatever you like. Now, this is a pressure treated post that we took off a pallet, so you wanna make sure you wear a dust mask. We are going to measure three inches. That's the width of our top pieces. I could use the tape measure, but there's no better way than actually using the sample piece that we cut. We're just going to put it up against the fence and make sure it's flush with the edge of the blade. We're going to go ahead and cut our uh, three inch wide rabbit all around the top part. Then we're going to switch it over and cut our three and a half inch wide rabbit on the bottom part. All right. You want to make sure your miter gauge is square. And you know, there's a little discrepancy in the table. So you want to make sure you apply even pressure all around the same face of the board. I'm going to butt this up against the fence. And that's my three inch mark. I mean, I cannot make a mistake. I can't go past three inches. Our fence is locked in place and that's it. So what I'm going to do is make a cut all around the post. And then I'm just going to nip away at it, move it away from the fence and nip away at it, make another cut until we have our rabbit cut. All right. I'm going to put on our dust collector, start the saw.
there you go. You can see how that works. So what we're going to do is just go around and cut the rest of them, but you can see how that fits in there. It's flush with the top, and that's going to be our main support for this table. Let's just go ahead and do the same thing all around. All right, that looks great. We're just going to go ahead, move our fence over, and cut a rabbit at three and a half inches wide for the bottom. Now again, I'm just going to use, instead of my measure, just going to use the boards we cut. They're at three and a half inches. We're just going to move it over and take a hard read right off of the blade there. All right. You know, some salvage boards from our local library, a bookcase. It's always good to get to know the people in your town. Uh, they called me up and said, can you use this? And by all means, you know, some salvage boards uh, from a pallet. It looks great. And some off-cut pine. So you really don't need to spend a lot of money to create a nice piece. All right, let me show you what I did. I went ahead and I drew some lines on our supports and our feet just to cut a nice angle. And what that does, again, this is arbitrary. I just happen to measure up about inch and three quarters and then over by about three and a half. And using our sample block, when we attach our supports, it just lightens it up. It doesn't make it look so monolithic. Now I did the same for the feet, for the base. And you can kind of see now how that's gonna go together. So, let me just go ahead and finish cutting the angles on the rest of the pieces. Again, you can do this on the table saw or by hand if you want. Alright, you could clean these up with a sander. I'm just going to go over to the bench and just make them smooth with a hand plane. Alright, they look great. Now what we're going to do, we're just going to take our feet, our table supports, and we're going to go ahead and glue them onto our post. If you wanted to, you don't have to use a solid post. This can get a little heavy. You can use four boards and join them and create a hollow post. And uh, if you're still worried then about the, the lightness of it that it would easily knock over, you could just uh, put a smaller block at the top portion of it or the bottom one. But that would certainly lighten it up. And all in all, it's still not that heavy at all. It's a really nice table and I like the size of it. Just have to make some chairs to go with it now. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spread some glue on that surface there. Put our foot. Now remember, you want the angle of the bevel going down. It's easy to get turned around on this. And I'm just going to flush it up with the back of the base. And then what I'm going to do is I have a quarter inch Forstner bit in here. I'm just going to drill a couple of holes just, just about a quarter of an inch deep. And then we're going to screw this on and we're going to put a couple of caps in here. And we'll sand them flush afterwards. You don't have to do this if you don't want, if you don't mind the look of screws. Okay. You don't need a lot, remember? The more squeeze out you have, the more cleaning up you, you have to do. But you do want to make sure you cover the surface. All right. Just going to make sure this is up against that edge and flush at the back. It's just going to create some gaps. If not, it's not going to structurally hurt the integrity of the piece. So I'm just going to 
If you want to, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can clamp it down. And there we go. I'm just basically going the thickness of the Forstner bit. We'll put another one on in here. And there we go. Now, this is pine. You don't have to pre-drill. It's a soft wood. Normally, I would pre-drill if it was a hard wood. There we go. And you just want to make sure you're back enough from that edge further back so that it doesn't split. All right. That's still nice and flush up there. I'm just going to go ahead and put this screw in, and we'll just go around and do the same thing for all sides. And we'll put these plugs on afterwards when we have them all done. Again, watch your bearings. Keep your bearings about you. It's easy to get turned around. So now this one is going to fit in there. And you can start to see this take shape. All right. Go around. Clean up any glue squeeze out. Look at that. It's taking shape. All right. That looks great. So while that's curing, we're going to go ahead and cut out our tabletop. I'll show you how to do that. We're going to use a router, but you could use a jigsaw with the circle template, anything. Yeah, I have a couple of these tables out on our back deck, and uh, they're a little weathered now. I made them the same way. I just used some rough um, lumber, that uh, uh, you know, 4x4 four four lumber, some off-cut pine from, from the scrap pile. Um, but the door, um, pardon me, the, the tabletop, I cut out of an old bulkhead door. A friend of mine commissioned me to replace his bulkhead door and uh, he was going to take that to the dump and throw it out, but it was beautiful. It was layers of all this different color paint, um, even had the old hardware on it and I hated to see it go in the dump. All right, let me show you what I did. After I took the clamps off, I went and I counterbored a couple of holes and that's where we're going to put our screws in. I just used a Forstner bit, threw in a, some plugs, and then sanded them smooth. It just gives it a nicer appearance. It tidies it up. I then put a chamfer bit into my router and we did stop chamfers. They used to call these wagon beveling in the old days. Um, and I just chamfered, put a heavy chamfer on all four corners. Just lightens that up a little. If you wanted to, you could take this to the bandsaw and sculpt it out. And like I said, it just gives it a little lighter appearance. On our feet, that's why you save your offcuts. Just a couple of inches long, I took some pieces and I glued them to the bottom just to create a little pads and what that does is elevate it so it finds purchase better. If you have a little inconsistency in your floor it would rock if we didn't have that. So that's it. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how we're going to cut out our circular top. Alright, let me show you the circle cutting jig. Now first of all what I did is I took, after our glue up was done for our boards, our shelf boards, I flipped them over. I want to cut from the underside. And the reason is that is because our simple circle jig, I'm screwing a hole right in the center of it. I'm not going all the way through, but that acts as our pivot point and allows the router to pivot on that, rotate on that. Now this doesn't get any easier. You can buy from woodworking catalog stores circle cutting jigs, but this is just a simple piece of half inch plywood. Now I want a 26 inch diameter tabletop. So what I did, I drilled a hole um, to allow a straight bit for my router to go through and I just measured 13 inches, drilled a hole, and put a screw through there. Now what I'm going to do is just line this up. I've already cut this a little bit just to, to test it out, make sure it works. And I put a washer underneath the screw so that that helps elevate it and makes it easier to rotate. Now you want to check this periodically when you're using this jig. Last thing you want is this to come out on you. Now, you can see how that's going to work. Simple jig. It's going to create a lot of dust, so you want to wear a dust mask and you want to have your ears on. Now, I'm using a plunge router. You can use a fixed base router and just turn it incrementally and go along. Now, we're going to take a few cuts. We're going to do this incrementally. Um, you get a smoother cut and where it's important, now remember, we flip this over. So our last cut, the one that goes through, is the one we just want to take our time on and make sure we get a nice smooth cut. All right. Make sure the router's off first before you plug it in. All right.
All right, there we have it. Again, on the last pass, just take it slow, be a little careful, be very aware that it might drop a little bit. That's why we had it supported underneath. There we go. We have our tabletop. So I'm just going to clean this up, we'll turn it over, and then we'll install the base. Yeah, if you wanted to, you could, you could make a, a square top. I would just soften the corners a little, so kid-friendly kind of thing, but it would also mimic the square of the base. Um, and it would look right at home. Same thing, um, even a little easier to do. Not as time consuming. You don't have to bevel th the corners here if you're gonna do that, keep it very square looking. And again, you can also sculpt out, take this to the bandsaw or use a hand coping saw and cut away the middle to soften that and lighten it up. There's a lot of possibilities. You can turn this, you can even buy pre-turn pedestals you see for handrails and things like that at your home center. If you wanted to use that, keep the end square and do the same joinery to fix the, the feet and the supports. All right, that looks great. Again, these are old shelves out of a bookcase. Now, if there's any discrepancies, you can just knock it off with a card scraper or a hand plane. Um, you can see the oak edging. I left that right against the old poplar boards and that's fine. I just think it kind of kind of helps uh, the history of this table. Anyways, I'm going to turn it over and you, well, you can see the old grooves from the underneath of the shelf. And what I'm going to do now, and eventually I'm probably just going to give that a light scuff sanding and then um, put some oil on it and bring out the old finish again. Now I'm just going to do this by eye. You don't need to, to measure it up. I'm just going to try and even out the boards, find our center. And I have some screw holes that I put in our feet. And then what I've done is I made a couple of cleats. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it on this one just so you can see it. I'm going to lay those down and I'm going to screw them into the feet and then into our boards. And it's going in the same direction as the green. So as when this table, I mean, this is pretty stable. It's really old. But when it expands and contracts, it'll move with it. If I'm putting it on the other side of the grain, you should elongate the holes so the screw has room to move when the, the tabletop expands and contracts. All right, that looks great. So uh, shelves we rescued from a bookcase, a piece of wood we rescued from a pallet, and some off-cut pine, and there we go, a nice little cafe-style table. I think if I made one this well when I first moved out, my mom would have come over for dinner more often. Anyways, as usual, I had a blast building this with you, and I hope you come back and see us again here in the garage. You know I'm doing just fine But hey, hey, I'm doing fine Out here on the road As long as I have friends to call I'm never All right, let me show you what I did. After we glued and screwed these on... All right. What did I do? What did I do? That's it. And... Join us again yeah. <laughs> here at Frank's Place. <laughs>